Hi, I'm Cray Price with Surface Water Solutions. I've been in Australia for about 10 years or so. Um, today I'm wearing my red, white, and blue. Excited to be going back to the U.S. for a trip around the whole country. Got my itinerary planned out on the wall here. And um, I've got it on the map. If you want to look at surfacewater.biz slash USA, you'll see the uh, route around the U.S. And uh, we will be teaching some HECRAS courses along the way. If we'll stop by a city near you, uh, go ahead and sign up soon. Uh, some of them are filling up fairly quickly. Um, or if you're interested in private in-house courses, uh, just contact me that way. Now, we're going to be kicking this thing off with a HECRAS Pub and Grub. Free event in Portland, Oregon. Um, this is hosted by Kleinschmidt and Mr. HECRAS blog himself, Chris Goodell. Um, he's going to walk you through a couple of presentations. Uh, these are not your standard uh, derivations of the St. Venon equation or what you might have had in uh, other courses. Um, this is a bit of fun and a little more casual. Uh, Chris is going to show you how to pimp your ride with the HECRAS controller, how to get your uh, HECRAS to do whatever it is you want it to do, uh, customize it, uh, get your Monte Carlo analyses, and he'll also walk you through a pretty cool presentation on modeling the Missoula floods, which is what actually carved out the uh, Columbia River Gorge. Um, I'm going to then step into a couple of presentations, uh, one of which will show you how to spot errors in your model, even when it uh, looks real pretty, uh, how we can really interrogate it and make sure that uh, it'll hold up. I'll show you a few example files as well, um, some of the things that we've worked on in various classes, uh, some absurdities uh, all around the planet. and frankly, on other planets as well. And uh, then we'll be followed by Sean Welch talking about uh, motion terrain surface and some, uh, some advances there. Now, just to give you a quick preview, I will show you a few of the models that uh, we'll throw together. And uh, if, if you do come along on the night, bring a USB drive along if you want any of these. Um, you can copy them and play around with them yourself. What we've got here, first of all, is the West Coast. Uh, you can see San Francisco here getting hit by as large a tsunami as you can possibly imagine. This one actually comes in, floods the San Francisco Bay, and goes even farther and takes out the whole Central Valley. And I'll show you how to get the free terrain data for basically the entire planet so you can play around with these things at any scale. But let's watch this tsunami come on in here from the, uh, from the Pacific Ocean. You'll bring it in and it comes in and uh, takes out Stockton and it actually leaves a little island there in the Central Valley. And then we'll watch it drop back down again. Now, we could also take this and uh, start with the flow in the Central Valley instead. So let me watch what happens here. If I, instead of bringing the flow in from the outside, we bring it in from the inside, um, like a big groundwater plume here. Where do you think it would make the most sense to, uh, to build a dam? Well, let's start out with the Central Valley completely dry. I'll back this up to uh, the first time frame here. And let's just uh, assume that the groundwater is popping out of the ground like we'll see actually happened on Mars a long, long time ago. Um, where would you build this dam? Um, and when we zoom in on it, I'll watch where this thing breaches now. Um, we could actually fill up a good chunk of the Central Valley here. And then uh, when the dam breaches, uh, you'll watch what happens as it takes out uh, San Francisco and everything else uh, downstream of it. Uh, you can see my current number of violations going on there if you're a HECRAS expert, or even if you just come along to the first lecture or the first presentation I'll do where we'll tell you how to spot those errors and when you need to start adjusting your time steps. So if you were a dam designer, this is probably where you'd end up trying to put your dam and you can see the flow coming through here. That's Vallejo right there. So if you, instead of the Vallejo Bridge, if you uh, built a dam across there, you could essentially flood the whole Central Valley. Now let's back out and see a couple of other items that we can have a look at. Um, we'll go ahead and recreate Lake Bonneville. So now we'll see what happens uh, when we fill in the Salt Lake to recreate Lake Bonneville as it was back in uh, geological time. So let's turn off our Central Valley model. We'll turn on the Bonneville Dam model. Let's back this up in time a bit. Make sure we can see the whole uh, Columbia River Gorge where it will uh, exit uh, out into the Pacific Ocean. So we'll start by flooding the uh, Salt Lake and you can see the water come in and it fills up um, until it uh, exits out through the Snake River and down the Columbia River Gorge and out to the Pacific Ocean. And I've put a whole lot of water in there so it actually fills up the whole Willamette Valley as well. Now let's see what happens if we actually watch the dam breach. Um, we can even cut profiles through this 
um, and watch what happens when Lake Bonneville fills and then spills up over the uh, over the dam. So this is the, uh, let me go back to the beginning. We'll fill up the lake here and then we've actually built ourselves a dam across the gorge um, at Pocatello and then out you go through the dam breach. Just a couple more I wanted to show you just for fun um, since we'll be doing our pub and grub in the Willamette Valley. Um, let's go ahead and take the uh, water out of Crater Lake and we'll build ourselves a pipeline to maybe throw it over uh, Multnomah Falls. Let's try that. So I'll zoom in on that area here. We've got Crater Lake down on the south and then up over the uh, over Mount Hood and then up to Multnomah Falls and let's see what the profile looks like from the top to the bottom. So I've built a uh, little geometry here that uh, has got my 2D flow areas um, for Crater Lake and for the uh, the gorge and then uh, now this new feature in uh, the new version of Hecaraz where you can actually view your culverts. This one had to end up being I think just so that we could see it. I've actually got a uh, culvert here that's uh, 3,000 meters in diameter and uh, 280,000 meters long. So uh, again, we're just scaling things up uh, because we've got big terrain, we can make big grids, we can make big pipes, and uh, it all works out just the same. And on that same note, let's try and build the biggest diversion channel ever made. Uh, let's go down to the Grand Canyon here. I'll turn off the uh, live one and go with my static imager to speed it up a bit and go to saved views. We will show you a little bit about how to do that. Now here is the Grand Canyon. I'm going to turn off uh, Lake Bonneville and turn on the uh, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. So we've got the Grand Canyon here in between Glen Canyon Dam and Hoover Dam uh, with Lake Powell and Lake Mead and what we're going to do here is just build a little bypass um, that's going to push the water from Lake Powell into Lake Mead and we can do that by excavating out our terrain there. So there's a bunch of things we can do here on this planet. I also want to show you some things that we can do out of this world. Now if you haven't seen Grady Hillhouse's video here on rivers on Mars and uh, some other uses for hydraulic models, this is a great video. I make every class I teach uh, show this video. You can see some modeling on Mars, but what we're going to do is uh, we'll let you do it yourself and see if we can out-engineer each other. So let me open up a new project here with our Mars terrain. Now in case you've never seen a projection file before that's uh, Martian. Here you go. If you go to tools projection on the ones that you bring in from NASA, you see that uh, equirectangular Mars uh, projection. Go figure. So uh, we can do a whole bunch of different things with this. Um, what, we, what we're going to do here, uh, and I'll demonstrate in class, is uh, adding our first intergalactic planetary dam right across this little valley here. And these valleys in some cases are about 10 times the size of the Grand Canyon. So anyway, that's just a real quick overview of some of the things that we're going to have a look at. I do look forward to meeting everybody who can make it to Portland for our free pub and grub. Come grab a pint with us. There'll be some lively discussions. Hope you enjoyed this. And if anybody wants these models to play around with, uh, just drop me an email and I'll send you some links to the uh, terrain data. In fact, I'll just show you right here where you can grab it all yourself anywhere on the planet. Free DEM data. It's not great for uh, fine resolution channel hydraulics, but for overall watersheds and zooming out like we're doing in our classes. Anytime uh, you want to try something crazy like uh, building a dam across the Strait of Gibraltar and flooding the Mediterranean and letting it burst through that dam, or we can sever New Zealand, uh, North Island in half, I'll show you that model, take Denmark out, or um, actually one of the things we've done is to chop off the heel of the boot of Italy with a canal going through there and link up the, uh, the seas on either side. So you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. You may as well. You've got all of the same concepts and just scale it up or scale it down. Um, um, when we're learning these things, you may, to, may as well have a little bit of fun with it. So that's my attitude. And one last plug for the uh, Pub and Grub details are here on the Hikaraz blog. Uh, hope to see you there. I'll try and post a few videos from the road. And with that, I'll sign off. Thanks.